Hey everybody, Topher here once again. And today on the workbench we have this thing, uh, something resembling a guitar. Uh, this is a BC. I don't know if that's an offshoot of BC Rich or not, but it, regardless, it's a beginner style guitar, electric guitar. And when I say this thing has some issues, this thing is a disaster. It is in big time trouble. The goal today is going to be to take this thing apart and assess all of the problems and see what it's going to take to fix it. After doing a little bit of research on this guitar, uh, it's worth about 70 bucks. And, you know, I could practically hear the comment section right now saying, Topher, why in the world would you work on a $70 guitar? Just buy a new one. Um, and you're absolutely correct. If you brought this guitar to any professional luthier, he's going to tell you, get this thing off of my bench. Um, anything that they're going to do to it is going to cost way more than the guitar itself. And so it's typically not worth it to have these things worked on. It's probably more cost efficient just to buy a new one altogether. However, the story behind this guitar is it belongs to a friend of mine. That friend is a college student and they're just learning the basics of guitar um, and they don't have a lot of money. I'm not a professional luthier, so I see this as an opportunity to practice on my skills of repair. You know, it's more or less a favor to my friend. Also, I'm just curious to see what all is wrong with this thing, because if you can see this, I don't know if you can, when I lay this flat down on the bench, the neck shoots off into an upward angle. Something crazy is going on here. It's also got a tremolo bridge and uh, it's pulled up. I can slip like two picks underneath that. More or less, I'm curious to see what kind of craziness is going on behind that back plate and under this neck pocket. And you can also see there's a, there's a pickup that's sunken down here on one side and I've actually tried adjusting that and it doesn't adjust. So something's going on there. It's in trouble. It's in bad shape. We're going to take it apart. We're going to see what's going on. And if nothing else, it'll make for an amusing video. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. All right, so check out the action on this guitar. It is insanely high. Like I can almost slip my finger underneath those strings without even touching them. It's crazy. And you can see, <laughs> look how the neck, it's tilted upward. I think at the very least, it's gonna need a, a neck shim. And I'm almost wondering if something has collapsed down in there, I don't know. But I can't wait to find out. <laughs> These screws are crazy rusty. Tells me this thing has been kept in a uh, humid environment. Whoa. All right, you guys gotta see this. This is, I don't know that I've ever seen this before. Look at that. So I'm not surprised to find that this is a plywood body, but look where it's separating. And this screw here is doing nothing. I bet I can just move that around. This screw is the only thing holding this tailpiece on. <laughs> Haven't seen anything like that. Have you?
All right, just doing a little discovery here. Let's start with the pickup that was sunken in right here. Um, best I can see, the mount is broken. Um, not exactly sure what I could do about that. Maybe just super glue it back, epoxy maybe, maybe even do something permanent and just get the pickup to a generic height and <laughs> hope for the best. But let's move on to more dire issues. Take a look at that. So the one screw that's doing anything, the one screw that's holding this claw on is coming up through the top of the plywood. And the other one, all it did was serve to split the plywood in half, separate those veneers. And also, look at the plywood. <laughs> like, I know this is a $70 guitar, but, man, this is like paneling. You know, it's not even high-quality plywood. It's crazy. Crazy. So, got to take all that apart. And see, and see what we can do. I'll go ahead and remove some stuff now. The input jack and that ground. Get all of that. Get that pit guard out of the way. All right. Let's see if we can deal with this tremolo situation. <laughs> That's how you do that. All right, here's where we are. Look at that. What a shame. So this is what we're going to do. I have some clamps and I have some wood glue and I'm just going to fill that void up with wood glue, clamp it down and at least just reattach this piece. And then I'm going to block off this tail piece. Um, I don't trust uh, this plywood. And even though I know that that wood glue is going to be strong, I don't trust it to have all that tension on it and not do that same exact thing again. So, I am going to reinstall this claw and just, you know, just to have a place to have it. <laughs> but I'm not going to put any springs in and I'm going to put a piece of hardwood in here to block this trim off. And he's just not going to be able to use the whammy bar. And if it gets to the point where he says, Topher, I've progressed so much, I need to use a whammy bar. I'm going to say, well, it's time to buy a Mexican fender or... PRS SE or something better than that. Alrighty, got her glued and clamped. Had a good amount of squeeze out, which is what I wanted. Um, just because I didn't have anything to really get that glue down in there. And I just used regular Tight Bond 2. And you know, you could use fish glue, hide glue for this, um, but being that this is a very, very inexpensive guitar, I'm just gonna use some good old wood glue. We'll let that dry and we'll get to work on the pickups. So this is what I came up with for a pickup height adjustment solution. I just got a little scrap of walnut and threaded that screw through it and turned it into kind of a nut and it holds the pickup at the right height. Actually, it's adjustable. So. That's probably a little temporary fix, but um, 
I'm gonna leave it in there as long as it holds. We got the tremolo blocked off. Nice chunk of oak, I believe. Piece of scrap that I had laying around. Um, so that's super stable. It's not going anywhere. It's locked down tight. So let's uh, start putting the rest of this together. So a slight change of plans. I am in fact not going to reinstall the claw at all. Um, I've tried to screw it back in somewhere, tried making pilot holes, um, and it's just going to split that plywood again. So I'm not gonna risk that. I'm just going to ground the pickups straight to the bridge and uh, it will not have a functioning tremolo system ever again, I'm afraid. All right, guys, it's all finished up. Got the neck shimmed, got the body glued back together, got the trim blocked, got it intonated, got it tuned. And so what do we think? What's the final result? Well, I gotta tell you, it's still absolutely awful. Of course, we do have to keep in mind that this guitar costs 70 bucks. To be honest with you guys, I'm not sure exactly why these guitars exist. I know that they're marketed as beginner's guitars, and um, but to be quite honest with you, there are so many more quality brands out there um, that offer beginner uh, grade instruments that are so much better than this. Um, do me a favor, do not buy this guitar. Do not buy this BC brand. I don't care where you see it, how much it costs. Uh, it's not worth it. Um, this guitar costs $70 for about $30 more. You can probably go on Facebook Marketplace and find you a good uh, Fender Squire used and uh, have a much better guitar and a much better experience. So what do we learn from this video? Well, we improved this guitar a little bit. Uh, it You can play it now. Um, and so it helps my buddy out, but it also helps me to refine my skills as a an aspiring luthier and a guitar repair person. 
Um, so it's not a total loss, but um, the moral of the story is these guitars stink. Don't buy it. Go out there and get you a Mexican Fender or a Squire and you'll be much, much happier about that. It was fun to dig into it and repair some stuff and see what we could do to improve this thing. Unfortunately, not too much, but that's not a big surprise, right? Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. I've got something pretty special coming uh, for the workbench, and uh, you don't want to miss that. So thank you for checking out the channel, and we'll see you right back here um, sometime real, real soon on Keys vs. Strings. Thanks, guys.